All right, over here at the top left, a player who took out MVP, great member of the Team Slayers, does well in the Team League. He is... Slayers Kanji. Slayers Kanji. His opponent down here at the bottom left, someone who knows mixed martial arts, he is... Slayers MMA. If I had one thing to say about MMA, I'd say that. Not to mention all the other things he's done. He's won games against awesome foreign players after killing his own command center. Only MMA can do that. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you should by now. I mean, there's no excuse, guys. If you guys are StarCraft fans, you surf Team Liquid, you surf Reddit, you surf like Ghostu Gamers, you should know by now. <laughs> um, look up Idra. MMA, Command Center, something like that, and you'll see a very funny, interesting situation. If you haven't seen that yet, treat yourself. Go look that up. It's pretty funny. All right, so right off the bat, we see a barracks going down for MMA, but Ganji, he is actually going to build his barracks a little bit later, or maybe he's sending an STV down. He may be thinking about going for a really fast Command Center, but where is he sending that SCV? Where is he sending it? He's gonna send an SCV back to make a command center in his base. I was like, is he gonna send that SCV to make a fast CC outside of his natural? Because that would be too a little too brave, Ganji. But no, he is gonna make his 15 CC back at his backdoor expansion safely. So that was just a scouting SCV. He ran it by the natural to check for proxies. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, is he gonna make a CC there? Then his SCV was running all over the map. I was like, He's gonna hide a CC Ace maybe. Is under attack. So MMA does get in here. There's really no way his opponent could have stopped him. If you skip that barracks, you don't have the Marine out to defend. Now how will MMA react to this? He's got a lot of different options. It looks like he wants to kind of go into a run one racks expand himself. He's got the SCV over there. But he's got another option. Now he could try to make a few barracks and kill his opponent. But that would not be MMA style. MMA not a cheeser, not an all-inner. Likes to play it safe, play it smart. So MMA is going to send his first Marine out, though, to take control of the Zelnaga Watchtower. Maybe pressure with it a little bit up at the front of the ramp. Start attacking those rocks, perhaps. Double gas is going up. Kanji is still sticking with that one barracks for now. As added his gas at the backdoor expansion, you're starting to see that a lot more. There's getting that gas up. Look, he's actually sent several SCVs to mine gas. That's really smart. I like that. He mines the gas there at that gas, so he gets a ton of extra gas. His SCVs are just waiting to transfer. Gets that gas in and then sends him to mine. That was pretty cool. I like that. So as you can see, MMA just kind of getting out on the map. Checking those Zelnaga Watchtower locations. Looks to make sure that his opponent is for sure doing what he thinks he is. He has seen the command center, so he's not going to be expecting some sort of crazy proxy barracks scheme that we have seen sometimes in this matchup. In fact, I was off racing as Terran the other day against some Masters players on the EU server. And in TBT sometimes on big maps, like on Terminus, I mean not on Terminus, on uh, Tall Dream, just like proxy five barracks. <laughs> Make like my first barracks at home and then proxy five more barracks. You can win with that sometimes if your opponent goes for a fast CC. But usually it didn't work because they scouted it and made a bunker. Now, Ganji is smartly, in fact, making a bunker. Not for the reason I described, but just to be safe, he knows his marine count's going to be a little bit lower than his opponent for a while. Doesn't want to have any Hellions run by or anything like that. Getting that bunker up is always safe, and sometimes, in certain cases, it's a little bit much to make the bunker. You know, I've, I've commented on that a few times. I'd be like, oh, I don't really think he... Whoa, that is to be... got lucky. Um, <laughs> sometimes I feel like it's not necessary to make the bunker, but in most cases, it's okay to make the bunker. You can salvage it later, get most of your money back. But in this case, uh, I think it's a pretty smart move. This opponent's going to have much faster tech than he is. Speaking of tech right now, we're going to see MMA go for Banshees, as you can see he's about to do that. Banshee switch. There needs to be a name for factories and um, starport switching to make Banshees. Maybe you call it like he's Bansheeing that starport. Or, uh, I don't know. There needs to be a verb for that. There's a verb for transferring your SCVs. It's called Maynarding. There's a lot of different StarCraft verbs out there, like cloning. If you guys don't know what cloning is, I don't blame you. It's a StarCraft 1 thing. You don't see it that often in StarCraft 2. But uh, there are words for things like that. One day there'll be a word for switching starport. 
and the factory to make Banshees. Now, Pre-Igniter Hellions are on the way for Ganji. I didn't mention that, but I'm sure you guys have been noticing on the production tab as I was rambling away to making a dropship as well. So you may want to do a Marine Drop. Yep, that's exactly what he's going to do. Similarly to last game, going to do a Marine Drop, try to use the Hellions at the front. Now, MMA actually doesn't have a Bunker, and he doesn't have a Wall Off either, so those Hellions could easily get into the main. He's actually going to send his dropship here a little early, and luckily he's going to get in before MMA can react. MMA going to run forward here. He's going to try to target down. Just barely gets it. <laughs> those Marines over there. You know, if you've got that many Marines shooting at one Marine coming out at a time, you can easily, easily beat it. But if the Marines did come out, he would have been in trouble. And... Oh, he walls it just in time. And those Hellions are not coming inside. The best they can do is burn down some trees. They're going to be elevated in here. He needs to drop them now. Oh, he's going to drop them into the back door base. That's pretty clever. I like that. Oh, and those SCVs are all lined up. Well, not anymore because they split themselves and uh, Ganji was kind of preoccupied with that tank a little bit, so he didn't get as many kills as he could have. But whoa, with that last swipe, I think that was well worth it. Did lose a lot of Marines. So that's pretty huge. Back at home, as you can see, Ganji being a little bit harassed by the Banshee. That Banshee actually got a lot of kills during all of that. She got 11. She may get 12. She does. She does get 12. <laughs> but does get taken out as the scan and the missile turret and the Viking all finished. There were three ways she was going to die, and Viking was the choice. Ooh, MMA. Saying that second Banshee up didn't do quite as much as her friend. Those Banshees, the other Banshees I was talking about the other day, they were sisters. These Banshees are sisters in law. Their husbands are married, or their husbands aren't married. <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> so here come these Hellions. <laughs> and, and those Hellions completely shut down. I was trying to make a joke there about, um, <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> the producers are like so confused. They're telling me, you're like, what were you, where were we trying to go with that one, Wolf? I don't even know. I was going somewhere with that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I know a lot of people have been posting on Twitter like, I like that Wolf laughs at his own jokes. I hate that Wolf laughs at his own jokes. I don't do it all the time, but that was one of those times where that joke failed so bad I just had to laugh. So right now, MMA taking a slight supply lead. 85 supply to 68. As far as worker count goes, he has four SCVs ahead as well. It's because of that Banshee harass was so successful, even though Ganji had his command center up much faster and had a lot more time to build SCVs, he lost a lot of his SCVs. A lot more than uh, MMA lost in that Hellion drop. See some Vikings coming over here, a little bit strange, a very aggressive Viking move. They're going to fly right into a missile turret. That was a little weird. They're going to fly into a missile turret again. Did get a shot of it. Uh, maybe one day I'll post on Twitter what I was trying to say about that joke because I kind of figured it out now, but the time has passed. The Banshees are dead. <laughs> the, I'm not laughing at myself, now, I'm just laughing at the producers in my ear. All right, here come the Hellions. They're going to drop in. They've just narrowly avoided those missile turrets. Trying to catch some of these SCVs off guard. And they're running in here doing a little bit of damage. Trying to take out these SCVs. Didn't do as much damage, I don't think, as Ganji wanted. Did kill a significant amount of SCVs. Could have been better for Ganji, though. All right, so MMA is going to push out here through the center of the map with a relatively large force. Has a few Marauders mixed in there as well. It's four Marauders, so if he catches his opponent on Siege, those Marauders are going to be very invaluable. Actually, sieging up here at the top of this cliff. Wants to maybe think about running the Marauders down when he gets... A good moment. Now remember he has that Zelnaga Watchtower, so he's going to see the forces breaking down those rocks and trying to avoid that cliff. And in fact, those Hellions will be spotted. They're going to run up here, but they will be get shot. See in a second, we'll get a shot of it. The Hellions going to run by. Oh, they actually completely avoided those siege tanks. Some lucky Hellions. Taking out that Marine. It's very important to have control of the Zelnaga Watchtowers in this matchup, because you want to be able to spot drops, you want to be able to spot... Hellions, but more importantly, wanted to be able to spot movements. And those Hellions, they, they saw the siege tanks, but they forgot and they went right to that Zelnaga Watchtower. Zelnaga Watchtowers are pretty important, but they're not that important. <laughs> that was the scariest barracks those siege tanks have ever seen. They unseized right at the side of it. Actually, just wants to reposition his tanks at the top of the cliff even further away because he knows his opponent has that barracks over there for vision. 
doesn't want to get busted, wants to keep up that soft contain he's got going. He wants to kind of keep his opponent zoned in that one area, doesn't want him to come up and be aggressive as he takes his third base, but little does he know, well, actually he just found out with a scan that there's a barracks going down over there. But he's trying to kind of keep his opponent away from where he's building his third command center. His command center is already done and up and running. So again, MMA ahead in the economy, making that faster third command center. Whereas Ganji's trying to make his own, trying to be aggressive at the same time, but it's so much further behind. And if you use the map like MMA is using it, your opponent, even if he has a better army than you, it makes it very difficult to cost-effectively attack. If your opponent has siege tanks sieged up and you've got your unseized tanks trying to run down, it's not going to work. That barracks should be ignored. Should just run in here and target down this command center to back up. Gonna get that missile turret as well. Now it looks like a pretty large force for Ganji's gonna try to circumvent this army. He has a lot of Hellions in there. See how long it takes Hellions to kill Marauders? <laughs> takes a long time. Now, MMA actually splitting his forces nicely here. Gonna leave some of his forces sieged up outside of that Zelnaga Watchtower, and some of them going to try to run over here and do a little drop action. May Elevator, all of his forces will just siege up. They'll be up to MMA to the side, but either way, he's going to do a, a drop into the backdoor expansion. Those siege tanks are going to support them. He can actually fall his Marines back to those siege tanks. The siege tanks help out and support them. But the siege tanks siege up too fast, so he's going to have to kind of skirt around the edge here, taking down those SCVs as best as he can. But he's getting shelled. Or rather, his opponent's getting shelled. Gotta be very careful. There's a lot of a lot of TBT comes down. <laughs> that Banshee uncloaked at the wrong moment. A lot of TBD comes down to what you know your opponent's doing and where you know your opponent is. Because siege tanks do well against siege tanks. If you've got your siege tank sieged up first, it's very important. If you've got your siege tanks in the right spot, that's also important. MMA gonna try to take out a lot of these Hellions. He's actually being flanked as well by some other Hellions, so he is gonna lose the small Marauder force in the middle of the map. Right now, supply-wise, MMA is still significantly ahead. 143 supply to 102 during this little battle. So some nice movements there by Ganji, picking off small, isolated forces. We saw him do that against MVP. That's how he was able to break MVP in that series. He just found forces, found weak spots, picked them off. And MVP actually did a very similar style to what, um, to what Ganji is doing now in some of those games. So he's practiced against a lot. Ganji, though, did, did the build himself, so... These are just kind of um, the new TBT. It's, it's not that new, but it's becoming the standard, I think. This Pre-Igniter Hellion type of build is really, really popular. And it forces, of course, the Marauder style from the opponent. As you can see, MMA, again, like you saw last game, reacted to this by making Marauders because if your opponent doesn't have that many Siege Tanks, you can use those Marauders very effectively to cut them down and get your Siege Tanks into position. So Ganji actually running into Siege Tanks. And like I said, a lot of this this is a game of limited information. If you don't know where your opponent's siege tanks are, you can lose a ton of siege tanks to just a few. That's pretty huge. You gotta avoid those Zelnaga Watchtowers if you don't have control of them, and Ganji did not. Using all of his tanks here, and GG! Just couldn't get a third base. Couldn't keep himself in that one. MMA, victorious, advances to the round of eight. He has got to be really happy with the results he's had here recently. The Super Tournament is its a real battleground. It's a real testing ground for players that aren't in Code S, you know, maybe in Code A, maybe not even be in Code A. So it's really good for MMA to prove himself here. But there are a lot of good players in here. There's basically everyone you could ever imagine in the GSL scattered within this tournament. Code A players, Code S players. It's kind of a way to prove himself. There he is, walking out, walking down to the crowd. He's going to get an interview over here. Welcome. Mm. You just advanced. How do you feel? I felt really lucky. He 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 felt really lucky. Yeah, 
네. 네, 네 저도 그래서. 궁금한 게 있는데 이제 항상 멀티태스킹에 굉장히 능한 모습이란 말이에요. 그리고 뭐 동시다발적으로 한두 군데가 아니라 두 군데 multitasking. 정도는 컨트롤을 해주고 있는 것 같은데 아무래도 많이 지켜보시는 And, uh, 팬분들 micro, 입장에서는 macro, 어떻게 연습을 하는지 어떻게 연습을 했길래 그런 플레이가 가능할 것인지 굉장히 궁금할 것 같거든요. 열심히 움직이면서 상대 병력 움직임을 읽는 게 제일 중요한 것 같아요. 아 이제 아, 굉장히 어렵네요. 네, 유닛의 특성을 보고 그것을 적극적으로 네. 사용했다는 모습을 볼수 있고 자 이렇게 돼서 이제 2강으로 really 올라가게 됐습니다. 마지막으로 이제 가고 싶습니다. 일단 다음 상대 꼭 동원이가 올라왔으면 좋겠고요. 그리고 방송 경기에서 동원이랑 멋진 경기 해보고 싶습니다. 네 앞으로의 선전을 기대하겠습니다. 네 감사합니다. 자, 어, 문성원 선수 기분이 굉장히 좋은 것 같아요. 그러면서도 so 좀... 네. wasn't quite translated for me, but... <laughs> Not even going to try to guess what he said. As I was just listening to my translators, they failed me. I know you guys are sitting back in the production room and me like, don't make me look bad, I'm sorry. You guys you failed me. <laughs> so, you know, it's like I, today, I'm, I don't have my co-casters with me. I'm, I'm here alone again, but keep talking to my producers for you guys. The producers are like the invisible and mute co-casters that you guys can't hear, but they, they help me out a little bit, sometimes less than others. <laughs> All right, so that game, though, very textbook example of how to deal with um, with that type of build. If you've got the pre-igniter Hellion build going against you, you've got to have units to defend. You've got to do good SCV splits. And as you guys have noticed, if you've got just a few units back at home and you do good SCV splits, you'll be fine. But we're going to have a two-minute break. Then we'll go into that second set right after that minute break. Two-minute break.